Aziz, I admire how you've never taken the stereotypical Indian roles. And I just want to tell you that if you did, you would make so much more money. <laughs> if you came out here right now with crossed eyes playing a sitar, I would fall on my ass laughing. <laughs> but still, what an actor. Such phenomenal range. <laughs> known as the toughest man in the world, presenting Andrew the Brick Wall Sosa! Looking forward to your new show, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Funny cops. You're always pushing the envelope, Andy. <laughs> Can't wait to see episode 10 when Brooklyn Nine-Nine has to deal with a rape. I dropped the rape kit, smorgidord. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> what is up, my friends? How y'all doing? This is your boy, Sosa Pones, coming at you with the Jonas Brothers Family Roast Review. Now, I lost track of this. I didn't keep up with when the release date was, and I'm a few days late to this, but I just wanted to cover it because... I love roasts. I love roasts. They're extremely hilarious. But it's the old school roasts on Comedy Central that I like. Not all of them were great, but most of them were. My favorite being the James Franco one because it's the best. You can tell that they're all really good friends and that they genuinely care about each other. And it's all coming from a heartfelt but funny place. It makes it more genuine. The humor is just so much better that way. Their laughs are much easier to laugh along with. And I really like that. I'm going to be inserting clips of that as you all just uh, saw within the intro throughout this video during my breakdown because of of my favorite scenes because i just love it that much all right i'm not even gonna do the normal intro i'm not even gonna hide the ball but yeah this was not the worst thing i've ever seen i've definitely seen worse things but the jonas brothers themselves were actually pretty good i actually like them they're good sports and they were actually pretty funny within their rebuttals themselves and the way that they roasted each other and they had their dad on there i really like that but some of them were bad like for example they didn't have jeff ross the roast master in there and you can't have a roast without them you know, without him you just can't do it and they shouldn't even have tried if they were going to be doing that and of course the first person that we got within this roast was lily singh oh my god the most cringe sjw monstrosity bigot that there is so not funny she failed so hard on her tv shows and she kind of even mocks herself a little bit for that but literally the first thing she does whenever she gets on there is oh woe is me promotes herself and then says bad straight white males and that's part of her roast it is so bad and she can be actually really pretty if it, like in this picture right here but oh god she is just so abhorrent she is so she is so obnoxious and i just can't stand it and that's the way you start off with the bang and you, you don't start off with the bang like ew just no now i actually found out that some of these wives they actually do some of the roasts within them too and the wives are actually halfway funny you can definitely tell that they're not professional comedians like jack white hall was he actually played the uh roast uh, kind of guy where he said positive things he played as if he was saying positive things about them just like jonah hill did in his roast to james ranko he, he was one of the best absolutely hilarious and everyone is going to make fun of james for the oscars it's obvious everyone was saying james was dead up there but i think that was anne hathaway's fault i mean f her for trying like at all <laughs> dare she attempt in some way to entertain the millions of people trying to escape their lives for a few hours i commend you james yeah he plays that kind of role and he's really funny he, he's really really good we have sophie turner who is one of the wives to do the jonas brothers i didn't all i knew her was from x-men i didn't know she was married to one of the jonas brothers that was really interesting daniela jonas was also really good you know she's pretty they all have pretty wives uh, but they they were funny. Uh, some of them comment or at least play it. They don't go out of their way to do it, but they play off of other people's insults on their, you know, SEX game. And I understand that it's all just humorful and fun. And if I was in that position, I'd be the same way too. But I would never joke about my partner in that way, even as just a joke. And I wouldn't want my partner to joke about that specific kind of thing 
And, and I know it makes me sound a little bit insecure, but I just don't like that stuff. I'm too much of a hopeless romantic. And even though I know my wife knows different and it's all just in good fun, I think there should be a little bit of respect and privacy. You know, you're, it's your job to build your partner up and there's some no-go areas. And I didn't like that they kind of broke that taboo even though they weren't really trying to. They were trying to be respectful. I don't know, that's just my kind of view on it, but I know there's probably going to be a lot of people in there who are making fun of me in the comments being like, oh, you're so insecure, man, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not it. That's just how I'm old school whenever it comes to that stuff. Uh, Priyanka, she she was interesting right there. She's 10 years older than Nick Jonas, her husband. I was like, whoa, cougar right there. Kenan Thompson was the host, and he was one of the better parts of the show. I like that. Now, he, he wasn't the most hilarious person on there, but he was the host. He wasn't supposed to be doing all the roasts and stuff, even though he kind of, he does a sub-in roast for Daniela Jonas. She just doesn't want to speak. Maybe she has stage fright or something like that. I don't know. Pete Davidson, oh my God, he is one. He is just as bad as Lily Singh. He's actually got a little bit of humor, but if you actually talk to him about anything political, like what with what he did on some of the previous roasts, is just abhorrent, obnoxious. He's one of the most unaware unself-aware people that there is it it's just ugh, i hate it like whenever he's done previous roasts and he, he's gone political about you know white supreme easy and everything oh it's just so bad now one of the saving graces i thought was going to be one of the saving graces was gabriel iglesias but he's in there as a little cameo at the end in the post credit scene. He's not even part of the actual roast. And that is just, putting him in there is such clickbait. It's to be able to attract more people to the show because no one else on here is really recognizable. Like when you don't have people like Jeff Ross and normal roast masters like Gilbert Godfrey. Like that's just a real shame. And they try to use him as clickbait. And his cameo isn't even really all that hilarious. It's really not that funny. Gabriel Gus is one of the best comedians ever. And... It just didn't do him justice on this one. Now, uh, another, speaking of libtards, oh, <laughs> oh, we got John Legend in there. Now, I'm going to say this. John Legend, it lives, tries, to, besides LeBron James, LeBron James is the only one who does this better than John Legend, but John Legend tries to fit every woke, stupid stereotype, black category and stereotype that there is, that all the Dems make up. He tries to fit all them. He says all the same BS that he just repeats their talking points and parrots it. And LeBron James is the only person worse than him. Like, he really, oh, ugh, it's disgusting how dumb he is. But I will say this. He was funny in there because he did, he did his most famous song. And he did a remix of it roasting them about, you know, how they want to be the Beatles, but they never be the Beatles. And he's actually funny. And the dude can sing. The dude can sing. I can't give him that. Like, people try to say, like, people like Bill Maher aren't funny because, you know, my right-wing friends are, like, they try to, make, you know, get it, make it political and they try to deny that he's funny. No, he's funny. Even just because you don't agree with his politics doesn't mean he's not funny. And I can't take that away from John Legend either. He is actually funny. So props to him on that one. He can actually sing. So props to him for that, too. So there were some parts that were actually pretty enjoyable, but the whole thing felt disconjointed it felt weird it just felt out of place if you catch my drift it had organization but it just l felt like it was done by like you know a, a high schooler who was trying this out for the first time uh i never gave you this compliment before but you're actually the reason i decided to become successful um i saw what you became and it scared the living shit out of me <laughs> jeff you're like the ghost of me and Seth's future if we never made it. <laughs> Dr. Phil was in there too, but he just made a little small cameo appearance and wasn't even really that funny. It just kind of felt forced, kind of like a Segway ham thing. And uh, they also had this really silly football scene in there where they were trying to make it seem like, you know, they weren't really that masculine because they're boy bands and stuff like that. But it, it just, it didn't really land. And they also had people kind of call virtually in and you're like, oh, well, you couldn't pay me enough to be there. And it, I mean, that's funny within its own, but I mean, it really doesn't land the same way. You might as well have just kept that stuff out of it. Like when you played the bad guy in 21 Jump Street. Oh, wait, that wasn't you. That was your less retarded younger brother, Dave. <laughs> Dave. That sounds like a made up brother name, Dave. Hey, James Franco's got a brother. What's his name? Dave Franco. 
then they try to play this little bingo game to be able to set everything up. That wasn't that bad, but it, it wasn't necessary. They could have just started out doing things the way that they normally do. You know, not any real intro needed, no setup needed, or anything like that. They also had this weird treadmill scene that was actually kind of funny, but it's just like, why? Why? Like, why put that in there? It's so unnecessary. I, I don't know. This is my personal opinions. It could have been done so much better. And, you know, they had some good content. They actually had some good ideas and jokes. And, but they were a lot of repetition, a lot of spins of the same jokes, and they really didn't feel like they wanted to go all out on it. They they felt like they wanted to stay safe. They stay, wanted to be conserved, not hurt anyone's feelings too much. And that's not the way you do these roasts. You just need to go all out on them. And I miss that kind of old school appeal where, you know, we, we just have to protect everybody's feelings nowadays. And we didn't have to worry about that stuff before. Bill Hader, holy mackerel. So hilarious. That was great. Oh, thank you. Too bad you can't do an impression of a guy with two equally sized eyes. <laughs> Man, look at that. Get a close up. I've heard of a lazy eye, but that left one's collecting unemployment. <laughs> but at least I got to be reminded of how much Ann Cutler absolutely roasted Pete Davidson and stuff like that before and how triggered it made him. But anyways, those were my thoughts on the review of it. I honestly wouldn't waste my time with it. In my personal opinion, that's just my straight up thing. Now, if you're willing to ignore all this and you want to actually just have something in the background and be kind of entertained and you're a Jonas Brothers fan, then you're going to enjoy this stuff. But don't be surprised if you're not that thoroughly entertained by it. I say it might be worth seeing. I wouldn't say don't see it, but I wouldn't say see it either. I am like straight up in the middle. It just depends on how big a fan you are of them. But if you're just interested in the roasting part and you don't really care either way about them, then I wouldn't really get involved in it. But I know they have a lot of fans, so that's going to actually going to be me recommending it to a lot of people. It just kind of it's just personally, however you want to take it, whatever your tango is, whatever your flavor is on them, that will determine on whether you should see it or not. Is if your fans see it, and if you're not, no, then just don't waste your time because it's not even really what I would call a roast. It's just more of kind of you know a family generation with you know a bunch of unknowns in the hollywood sphere kind of making fun of each other you look like johnny depp with lupus <laughs> does ryan gosling ever call you start laughing and then hang up <laughs> how about a hand for james's grandma 91 years old 127 hours is how long she has left Hopefully y'all will subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and select all features so you can see all my future content and you enjoyed this breakdown. Smash the thumbs up like button if you did. Leave a comment, support the messed up YouTube algorithm, whether it's smiley face algorithm, comment it all, it really helps out. Share this around with everybody that you know so we can either save some people some time or promote this to some other people because there were some good things, some bad things. I just hate the bad things even more. That's the unfortunate part. Follow me on my social media platforms too, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, links in the description, first comment, as well as all my payment processor information like pay PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. Those are the options that if you don't want to join my membership. So I would appreciate if you join my YouTube memberships. Lots of cool perks on there that's definitely worth your time looking into. And if I was to get the lowest amount from break, I'd be able to do these videos full time, bring all even better quality content. So just your appreciation would be appreciate just your consideration would be appreciated. Nah, you're not even gonna edit that out. It's more genuine that way. Hopefully y'all appreciate that. But yeah, that's basically it. Check out the rest of my channel. Should be some task popping on the screen right now, as well as some other roast uh, parts coming up, and then you know the my normal let's go Brandon outro. But yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed listening to me around. I can't wait to see what y'all have to say about it. If you did see it, let me know what you thought about it too. But yeah, we're going to be getting all that. If none of these, uh, if none of the tasks took you your fancy that we we're going to come up in a few seconds uh, during the roast part, then check out the rest of my channel too. Peace out. I saw your mall cop movie. What was it called? <laughs> Observing Report. Yeah. <laughs> it made me realize how funny Kevin James is. <laughs> Actually, Jonah almost couldn't make it tonight because he had trouble finding a tuxedo that changes sizes every three hours. <laughs> hey. Let's go, Brandon. Hey. Let's go.